welcome to Gospel of Deliverance. I'm Pastor Steve Williams. Thank you for joining me today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer so we may prepare ourselves to receive of His wonderful, holy, eternal Word. Father, we thank you for today. We give you honor and glory for your presence in our lives, your power overseeing our lives. God, we ask today that your word be buried deep within our hearts, that it may not be stolen, that it may not be corrupted in any manner, in any way, that the enemy may not come and twist and turn it, but instead we will receive heartily and wholly all that you have for us this day. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Friends, God is going to do something great in our midst today. Thank you, Lord. Dead and buried, raised and reigning. Dead and buried, raised and reigning. You see, with God Almighty, death is not the end, but the beginning. What we as weak, mortal-bodied beings see as the finale to life is in reality just the commencement of real life. Now here I want to draw our attention to the prophet Elisha. You see, the ministry of Elisha was not over when he died with 31 miracles which God wrought during his ministry. There were 16 major miracles during the time of Elijah, not including the translation. And of course, Elisha asked for a double portion blessing. He wanted that double portion. Not that he would be mightier than Elijah, but instead that he might be an asset to the kingdom of God. It was done truly in all humility. There were 32 major miracles in the ministry of Elisha. But it appeared that Elisha was done with miracles, for he was dead and buried, with the miracles counted at 31. But dead and buried with God does not mean the same thing to him as it does to us. To be dead and in the grave for Jehovah is just the beginning. Let's read in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. 2 Kings 13, 20 and 21, And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men. And they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Oh, hallelujah! God is true to his promises, has always been, and in always will be, true to his word. Our Lord and Savior, our King begins things when man sees the end. Here in 2 Kings chapter 13, is not documented the death and subsequent national mourning and the attending funeral of Elisha, but that which is important to God, to his timeline and his word. That is what is recorded. The death and resurrection of a man during a Moabite raid is written down for the glory of God. That miracle, the 32nd of the ministry of Elisha, is chronicled and my brothers and sisters of the Lord, mark us well today that what appears over for us is not the end for our awesome God and Father. Oh, oh thank you, Lord Jesus, for working in our lives, dead and buried. But friends, he is raised and reigning. Robert Hawker said of 2 Kings 13.21, Reader, Doth not the death of the servants of our Lord always remind thee and call forth holy joy in the heart, that though all die, yet Jesus the Master liveth forever? Sweet thought, and oh, the preciousness of the consolation. Thou art forever the same, blessed Jesus, and thy years do 
not fail. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Friends, Jesus never fails. And the very reason he does not fail is that he goes on forever and has been forever. Thank you, Lord. Even as he was upon the earth, all eternity future was laid out before him. And he was not just performing miracles for here on this earth. He was not just feeding the hungry here upon this earth. But his eye was upon eternity, and that is what is on still today for you and me. Again, on 2 Kings 13.21, the Sermon Bible Commentary had this to say, Relics are remains, and while we believe that no virtue resides in the material remains of a good man, we do not therefore exempt from efficacy his mental or spiritual remains, if he has left behind him in writing the effusions of a devout mind. We believe that these writings, by which he being dead yet speaketh, often exercise an influence for good upon readers long after he himself has passed away, and that thus the miracle wrought by the bones of Elisha is continually repeating itself in the experience of the church. And I don't know if you have had that experience, but often, as I have read the commentary and the writings of wonderful men and women of God, that it has touched my heart and that they have reached beyond the grave. Their ministry has continued on. Friends, just because someone's dead and buried does not mean the ministry has stopped. Just because Jesus was dead and buried in that tomb did not mean that it was over. Oh, hallelujah. Instead, within three days, he was up and about with eternity, all laid out before him. One of those ministers that touches my life is the writings of C.H. Spurgeon. He preached on Thursday evening, April 25th, 1889, and he said, Thus, God gave Elisha power, even after death, and certainly set the divine seal upon his message. It was as great a glory to him to give life to the dead as it was to Elijah to pass to heaven without dying at all. Mm. We have to prepare ourselves. We've got to change our mindset. Because, see, we here as mortals just mere human beings, we think on terms carnal. Things that are here short-term, life so short. We see loved ones pass. We see them young and old pass away unto the Lord. We see people that are young and old and die, and it appears that they have not communed with Christ. They have not repented. And we know that those that do not bow themselves before the Lord will find themselves in hell for all eternity future. Life is so short, and people waste it by and large. And yet, eternity is what is on the heart of God, because that is where He lives. He does not live on earth he does not live by our clock. Everything is eternal with him. Matthew Henry says of this verse, this great miracle, though very briefly related, was a decided proof of his mission and a confirmation of all his prophecies. It was also a plain indication of another life after this. When Elisha died, there was not an end of him, for then he could not have done this. From operation we may infer existence. By this it appeared that the Lord was still the God of Elisha. Therefore Elisha still lived. For God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And it may perhaps have a reference to Christ, by whose death and burial the grave is made to all believers a safe and happy passage to life.
right after this song by David Cornell entitled, He's There for You, we'll return to our sermon for today. So you're going through hard times You don't know what to do Making bad decisions You don't know which road to choose Tell you there's a friend That'll be there till the end He died on the cross for all our sins He's there for you He's there for you When the going gets rough you had enough You can't make it through He's there for you He's there for you Whatever you're going through He's there for you There was a time You walked a straight line With things thrown your way You went astray Telling you friend Make it right today He's there for you He's there for you Whatever you're going through He'll be there for you So you've reached a crossroad And don't know which way to turn And you're struggling for the answers Look to Jesus, that's the only way to go My friend, yet more there is than just the resurrection of a man when touching the bones of Elisha. This miracle stood as a sign to Israel of victory and the return of the cities taken by the enemy. We read of this in the following verses, 2 Kings 13, 18, 19, and then verse 25. 2 Kings 13, 18 through 19, and verse 25. And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then thou hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoaz, took again out of the hand of Benadad, the son of Haziel, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoaz, his father, by war. Three times did Joash beat him and recovered the cities of Israel. 
Now, while we may view the grave as final and cold, yet with God, as all things are possible, so real life begins. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, what we've been reading are God's promises to return, as we saw here with the cities of Israel. But often our view, even of what's here, is so limited, as was the kings in these verses. Listen to what happened. The prophet said, strike the ground. And he, the king struck the ground three times, and the prophet was upset with him. You should have hit it five or six times. But friends, he was limited in his thinking and in his faith. Instead, he could have returned and taken more back from the enemy. He could have attacked Syria and been victorious easily and comfortably. But instead, he was limited to three. God wants us to understand that he has no limitations. And when he speaks, we move. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Where is thy sting? Where is thy victory? Guess what? With Christ Jesus, there is victory. There is victory over the grave. Hallelujah. There is victory over death. And he's done it for us. Oh, when they went to the grave, hallelujah. Victory. Victory was mine, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read in Hosea 13, 14. Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death. I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, those beautiful words of victory over death. Now, we're not talking about that this mortal body will not die, with the exception of those that are still alive at the return of the Lord. Everyone will meet death upon this earth. That the Bible is sure of and has told us repeatedly. But the victory over the grave is ours. Therefore, there is no sting with death. Death has no victory because the victory is in Jesus, my Savior, forever. Friends, he has bought you and me. Oh, he sought us. He bought us by his redeeming blood. Hallelujah. Love that song. I love the victory in it. The message of victory, which we have today, dead and buried. But friends, Jesus Christ is raised and reigning today. And we do not have to be limited in our thinking. We don't need to let this life restrict what God has spoken. He has spoken to our hearts something eternal. And most often, our minds are upon the natural and what is going on right here instead of what's going to go on eternally. Oh, I wonder with the prophet Elisha, as he died, Soon after this instance with the king, he was already a sick man, elderly, ready to go home and be with the Lord, and the Lord took him. But there was still work to be done when that dead man, when that uh, Israelite was thrown in. They had some other place prepared near the tomb of Elisha. When the Moabites began their raid and they threw the man in, and when he touched the bones of Elisha, 
He came to life, and I am sure that he walked home joyously with his good friends that had buried him. Friend, you and I today are not limited by what is going on here on earth. We have all eternity future to look forward to. We have God's eternal plan before us, and we do not need to let ourselves become tied up in just what is going on right here. But instead, our hearts must be upon what is transpiring here that has an eternal goal and what will be for all eternity future. And we are already told what those things are, what to expect for eternity, what to expect for those things that will minister eternity to those that are in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. We'll be right back after these words of wisdom by Reverend Rick Cornell. One day, a young man and his servant left home in an attempt to find his father's mules. After having no luck and covering a lot of ground and being two or three days away from home, the young man was concerned that his father had stopped worrying about the mules and had become fearful for his son's life. It was about this time that the servant said, there's a prophet who lives in this town and everything he says comes to pass. Let's inquire of him concerning the mules. He will surely tell us of their whereabouts. After some discussion about a suitable gift for the prophet's service, they bolstered the nerve to approach the man of God. Unbeknownst to the two young men, God had spoken to the prophet and said, Today you will anoint a king. I will bring him to you. Therefore, upon the arrival of the young man, God spoke to the prophet Samuel and said, This is the man. The young man, whose name was Saul, said, I'm not worthy to be king. Our tribe is the smallest, my family the least, and I am the least in my family. Saul felt like he was the least likely person in Israel to become king. Yet God said, you're the man. Saul literally went from a donkey chaser to king in one day. I have always enjoyed this story found in the Bible, 1 Samuel chapters 9 and 10. It has always been a blessing for me to know that down through the ages of time, God has blessed many people from many different walks of life. Actually, some of the greatest heroes in Bible history were quite common folks, shepherds, fishermen, tent makers, etc. It seems that God takes pleasure in elevating those of humble means and making them leaders for His cause. Now I was thinking how some people feel put down or small because of their education or lack of a trade. Some feel that life has dealt them a bad hand and they're stuck in dead-end jobs and situations. Let me encourage you who feel this way today. There's always a way out of situations, and we are never stuck. Hard times don't last forever. Many times there are things we can do to change our own direction. Sometimes we need a little help. Don't be afraid to accept it when you get the opportunity. Always understand this one thing. If you never get a better job or a higher standard of living, never, never allow yourself to think that you're any less than anyone else because of what you do. Remember, it's not the 
quantity of the job that's important. It's the quality of the person that's important. Hey, if a donkey chaser can become king, who knows what can happen. With God's help, all things are possible. Our next verse is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, 2 Timothy 1 and 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Hear those words. It is present tense. Let's read that again. How about it? Because this means life to you and me. But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light. In other words, he's made it apparent through the gospel. He's brought it to light. Friends, immortality has been revealed to us. Life eternal has been revealed to us. We don't have to wait for the understanding of it. God's already told us and said, My children, this is the way it's going to be. You're going to be praising me forever. You're going to have victory forever. All things that are right now will pass away. But my friends, all things eternal, eternal life, will live joyously, bountifully. We will go on with Christ Jesus for all eternity future. Thank you, Lord. And all of those that died in sin will also go on eternally. But theirs in death and destruction and torment all because they would not believe the message of Christ Jesus, all because they would not have of Him. Thank you, Lord, for preaching to us. Thank you, Lord, for letting us hear your word that we might be saved. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 5 and 6. In Mark... 16 verses 5 and 6, and entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrightened. And he saith unto them, Be not affrightened, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, dead and buried was Yeshua. Dead and buried, his body cold, the tomb perfumed with spices to cover the stench of death. And here the women of God approached to administer the final mixtures of spices and perfume, as was the custom. But he, the Christ, was not there. Dead and buried he was but now raised and reigning as king forever, forevermore. Friends, never count God out. Never count out God's miracle working power. Oh, doesn't it just make you want to praise the Lord because death has no victory over you and me? Pastor does not have victory over your ministry. It does not have a victory, Mama, over your prayers, Daddy, over your Bible readings. It does not have victory over those. 
for it goes on in your children. It goes on with your grandchildren. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That dead and buried means nothing to God. I said dead and buried means nothing to God. For life begins eternal on the other side of the grave. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to close with just a few verses more. Matthew 27, verses 52 and 53. Matthew 27, 52, 53. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Then in Leviticus 23, 10 through 12, Leviticus 23, verses 10 through 12. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the firstfruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We're getting, getting close to the whole point. John 12, 24. John 12, 24. Listen to this verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat, fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Oh, how gracious is our Lord that his death and resurrection was foretold so long ago, that the means was celebrated, yet not really comprehended by the masses. Jesus was the single seed of wheat planted, and the sheaf, all those that he raises. Woo! Glory to God. And yet God had it instituted so many centuries ago to wave that sheaf offering. Mm, hallelujah. Makes me feel like singing a song of victory. Friends, we have victory in Jesus because of him going to that grave and because he was resurrected, dead and buried, raised and reigning. Reigning today as our king. Oh, hallelujah. Believer in Jehovah, know this. You may feel dead and buried today, but the one who reigns shall raise you up, bring victory to you as he did for Israel. You may feel like all is lost today, but he brings life where death rules. I proclaim that Jesus was dead and buried, but he is raised and reigning. As king of the universe, he reigns, my friends, in our lives, over our lives, through our lives, he reigns. You may feel defeated, downtrodden, facing hopelessness, but I have good news to bring, and that is why I shout and sing with you my joys I share today. Friends, Messiah reigns. I said Jesus reigns in heaven and earth, throughout the whole universe, and in your heart. He reigns, and he does and will not desert us in any way. But instead, as we read today about the victory of the retaking of the cities, so Christ brings victory to you and me, not just for today or tomorrow, but eternally we shall be victorious. Praise God in the highest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, not just eternal victory, but victory right now is given to us spiritually. 
God will make us overcomers, more than overcomers, of all of the battles and all of the enemies of the kingdom of God. He will make us victorious. Hallelujah. Our Savior may have been dead and buried, but we know that he is raised and reigning still, still on his holy throne forever. Oh, still on the throne. And because he's on the throne, I am alive today. Not just alive in his spirit today, but alive evermore will I be when I go to meet him. Thank you, Jesus. When I draw my last breath, my life truly will begin. When I close my eyes for that final time, then truly I will know what it means to live. And so will you. Friends, he was dead and buried, but he's raised and he is reigning today. He is king currently and for all eternity future. No one else can come against him. Satan can battle and gripe and gritch all he wants to. He can have all of his plots and his plans. He can come against you every second of every day, send all the demons of hell to fight the church. And he cannot win. For Jesus has already paid the price. He's raised and he's reigning. And no one can take anything away from the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray today that this message gets home in the heart, right here, right there in the heart. Oh, let it sink deep that God is on his throne, that Jesus has paid the price, and that you and I, are made victorious by his everlasting power. And that not only will we see victory in this life through the Spirit of God, but we see victory eternally to be with Jesus evermore. And with those that have gone on to be with him, the great saints of God, many of them will be our loved ones that have known the Lord. Many of them will be those great and mighty saints of yesteryear. Abraham and Isaac, and we will see so many of those heroes of the faith. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we know that with this life, it has a term limit on it. Until it is your appointed time to come back for your church, everyone that is breathing will die. But you reign, and therefore we have life eternal. And in this life we have victory through you because you reign. You are our sovereign. And we praise you today that you have opened our eyes fresh, that we may rejoice in what you've done for us. And Lord, that as so many ministers, uh, Bible study leaders, Sunday school teachers, evangelists, prophets, preachers, teachers, and pastors, all of those in the lay ministry, the bus drivers, the greeters, those that attend in prayer. God, all of those, their ministries are not short-sighted, but we can see the eternity future in them, just as we saw in the life of Elisha, when he died with yet 31 miracles to have appeared upon this earth with him. But that 32nd lacking, until that dead man was thrown in in the time of desperation, and then your power was revealed through that ministry still. God, we thank you for it, that what we speak to those that we love, 
to those that we're concerned for, when we reveal the Word of God to them, when we pray, when we study, we're studying, we're praying for all eternity future. God, we thank you for this anointing upon us today, that our eyes are open. And I pray that the eyes of those that we share this with will be opened as well to get our minds off of what is going on now and our minds upon your plan for what's coming next, all eternity future. We praise you for it, Jesus. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining me today. I know that your time is precious and you have so many things to do. And I really do appreciate you joining me for these few minutes for song, words of wisdom, and also to hear his wonderful, glorious word. God bless you. You have a great day in Christ Jesus with your family and your friends. Goodbye.